fellow romance readers, I'm Amy. And I'm Sarah, and this is Post Book Depression. You know that feeling you get when you finish a good book that you didn't want to end? Have you finished a book and just weren't ready to move on from the story and its beloved characters? You find yourself needing just a little more? This multi-trope romance podcast gives you the opportunity to dig deeper with us into books we love as we discuss all the reasons we can't move on. Feeling chatty? You can continue the conversation with us on Instagram at Post Book Depression Podcast or on Facebook in our Post Book Depression discussion group. We would be so grateful if you would subscribe to our podcast and take a moment to leave a review. Are you ready? Let's discuss. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. I'm Amy. And I'm Sarah, and today we're going to be discussing What I Should Have Said by Max Monroe. The first few minutes we're going to do a brief review of this story without any spoilers, then we are going to shift into a deeper book discussion. It's going to include lots of spoilers, but don't worry, we will let you know before we do shift into that deeper book discussion. That's right. So before we dive into the discussion, Amy, tell us what the story is all about. On her wedding day, a young woman receives a letter from a woman that will have her running from her wedding, away from her hoity-toity upper-class life, toward the hills of Vermont where her sister lives. She hitches a ride from a grumpy guy who harbors secrets of his own. This enemies to lovers small town story has secrets, heartbreak, tension, and healing. Sarah, what did you think about what I should have said? Okay, well, I was completely surprised to all of this because you had actually started it and said, hey, I think we have a book here on our hands for the podcast. So I went in completely blind. I did not know anything about what the story was going to entail. And I was very pleasantly surprised by a lot. I didn't know some of the serious components that it was going to take on. Everything about this, I, I had no expectations. And it was really delightful for me because I could just go in and not know really what was kind of going to happen next and what to expect. Yeah. So what did you think? I too went into this one blind. Surprisingly, Mm -hmm. this is the first book that I've read by Max Monroe and I loved it. I love small town romances. I just love the community, the connection that the characters have Mm -hmm. in a small town vibe. I love the enemies to lovers vibe. That's one of my favorite tropes and watching their connection grow throughout the story. I love it. I was here for it and I was pleasantly surprised uh, by just the little twists and turns and all the things that the story entailed. I was too. All right, let's get into our ratings. Angst. Angst. This was just like a 1.75. There is definitely some angsty moments throughout, but it's not a gritting teeth the entire time. I think there's some other that are a little bit more. 100% agree with you. I did one and a half for all the same reasons. Mm -hmm. It's not heavy on the angst at all. No. All right, humor. Humor. It was a one. I did one and a half. Yeah, there's some... There's some... And I could probably bump mine up a little bit. There's some moments, but it's not... um, it's not like it's more all like throughout. chuckling and yeah. just kind of sprinkled here and yes, there. Yes, that's a good way to describe yeah. it. Yeah. All right, spiciness. Like a 1.25. I did one and a half. Yeah. There's not a lot. No, there's good tension. There is good A lot of tension. flirting. Mm-hmm. All right, tears. It was a three. Same. <laughs> yeah, it was more sad than anything yeah. else for sure. It has there's some... a part of the storyline that does contain some heavy things and heavy topics and things yeah. like that. So definitely higher yeah. on the tears. Overall. Overall, it was a 4.25. I love <laughs> I love it when we're this same I know. With overall. Um, this story is so good and it just, yeah, I just, you should just, if you haven't read it, you need to read it. It's fabulous. I don't know what more to say. Yeah, I loved, I loved the chemistry of the characters. I mm-hmm. mentioned that it did feel a little bit insta-love to me, it, which we'll get into in the deeper yeah, discussion. Yeah. But overall, 4.25 for me. I agree. Loved it. That concludes our spoiler-free quick review of the story. Now we're going to shift into a deeper book discussion. It's going to include lots of spoilers. So if you haven't read the story, go check it out and then come back and listen to our deeper discussion. We would love to connect with you on social media. You can find us on Instagram at Post Book Depression Podcast, on Facebook in our Post Book Depression discussion group. You can also email us at postbookdepressionpodcast at gmail.com. The opening of this story is on Nora's wedding day, and she gets this mysterious letter from a mysterious woman, and this sets her running for the hills of Redbridge. Let's yeah. let's begin. Okay. Woo. Yeah. I was just dying <laughs> to know. What, what was in the letter? What is in this letter? Because I sat there and I thought, this is so random, but I was like, is this another one of those face blindness stories? <laughs> <laughs> she said, she's like thinking in her head, she doesn't recognize the Oh, I married. had the same thought. And yeah. For like a brief second, and I was like, no, no. Because, you know, I went into the story not knowing anything about what the premise was. So, yeah, no, that's not it. <laughs> 
So uh, the whole time I was just trying to figure to it out. I yeah, I assumed that it was something super shady. I assumed that this man probably had women on the side. That was kind of my thoughts, which isn't too far off. And but his is a little bit more. A little more to it than a little, that. A little, a little, a little bit. <laughs> but we don't A little find bit that darker. Out. And yeah, but we don't know that for quite a while. Yeah, I would be running too. These stories are always interesting to me. You come across somebody leaving uh, somebody at the altar. It really makes you wonder what would drive them to such lengths. It's I know. It's gotta be something big. Yeah. Let's fast forward to Ben and Nora's meet cute. She is headed to Redbridge, like we mentioned. She's been on a nine hour bus ride to this place where she her where her sister lives and this truck is driving at her. I loved the audacity that she has to stand in front of this truck <laughs> to make it stop. Uh- that's I was, where she meets Ben. Yeah. I was enraged. On his behalf. On Ben's behalf because you don't do that. You don't jump in front of a vehicle. That's not how you get somebody to pull <laughs> over to help you. He clearly wasn't going to stop though. And she needed a ride, Sarah. <laughs> I guess, but. He was real know. peeved with her. Yeah, rightfully, rightfully so. so. I knew you were going to say mean, that. <laughs> rightfully so. I was on Ben's side. And at all the points that he makes when she finally does get in the the truck with him, you know, about he's thinking about hitchhikers and how dangerous that is for a woman to do and all these things. And I just thought, yeah, what about that? (laughs) (laughs) You know, so yeah. I I loved his inner dialogue. I did too. That was, yeah, that part was pretty comical to me. I loved it though when she's kind of just word vomiting all over everywhere and she says, just let me out right here. And he slams on the brakes and makes her get out. I know. Yeah, (laughs) that scene was very funny to me. And I, but I was kind of surprised because he is obviously concerned for her well being. So but we he, don't know until later that he follows her to the yeah, well, Yes, that's true. That's true. But at the same time, I thought, because she had to walk. What was it? Four more miles? It was a or long time. time. It was a long time. Many miles. Okay, one mile is just a bit far when you're, <laughs> you know, just... Anyway. Hot and bothered. Yeah. yeah. All the things. Let's move into Nora and Josie's relationship. She shows up at Josie's door and has not seen her sister in five years. Five long years. They've barely spoken. They did not leave on good terms after their grandmother passed away. Let's spend some time talking about Nora and Josie, her sister. See, it's stories like this where you feel like you should be on the side of the female character that is supposed to be our heroine of the story. And I have to say, just judging from the wedding day that she left, I thought, I'm on Josie's side. I don't know what happened between (laughs) you guys, but I wouldn't let you in my house immediately either. It sounds like you have some beef with Nora from the first several chapters. I don't know. I just, I mean, I knew that she was obvious. I liked her character, but at the same time, I thought, okay, you haven't spoken to your sister and I mean, maybe it's just me, but I'm like, you come from this uppity uppity New York, nothing against, you know, whatever that Just an upper class life. demographic, but I'm more of a small town girl. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. You fit in with Josie. I fit in with Josie. <laughs> yeah. I would Josie just be, is your yeah. people. <laughs> She's my people. So I would have been Josie on that doorstep. No, you can't come in. <laughs> I absolutely agreed with her also. If it had been five years, you left on bad terms, and it's clear your sister shows up with a suitcase. She's mm-hmm. got ulterior motives to want to come inside. Yeah. I think Josie had every right to pump the brakes on that a little bit and expect some kind of explanation. Right. That scene is comical to me when Nora is trying to give her reasons for why she should be able to stay with her and stuff. And yeah, it was just funny. Good for Josie. She's opened her own coffee shop, Caffeine, Mm -hmm. and she's got herself a nice little business there in town. Mm -hmm. And I absolutely love that Josie tells her she's got to earn her keep essentially, Mm -hmm. and work at caffeine. Now, Nora (laughs) cannot make a cup of coffee to save her life or any of the things in this coffee shop. She's clearly fumbling around in the coffee uh, shop when she's working there. She realizes she's a catastrophe just waiting to happen, which is comical on my perspective, watching her just fumble around. I felt bad for the customers of that coffee shop oh, because as a coffee drinker, I, <laughs> the morning that she, Josie leaves her to go to the store to get some more milk or whatever And it is, leaves her alone. And Ooh. leaves her alone and she says she'll be fine and then two people come in, which that is a funny scene. 
But when Ben comes in and then he lies about his name and <laughs> then the mayor so, of the town. So and he but says the mayor's name. <laughs> I love that she was honest because I thought, how is she going to do this? She doesn't know how to make anything. And I really kind of thought, is she going to try to sell this by pretending to make something <laughs> or is she just going to be honest? So it, I was thankful that she did not lie, but Same. man, it would be really hard to swallow your pride and have to admit to the person <laughs> who kicked you out of their truck, uh-huh. you know, that, hey, I can't make that. And I can't make that either. <laughs> how about a black coffee? How about black coffee? I'll just pour that. It's not long after Ben leaves and the mayor leaves and all of that, that Thomas, her ex fiance shows up at the coffee shop. This is kind of an interesting scene to me. First of all, he's been texting her nonstop and she's been ignoring him. So she is surprised when he shows up because she doesn't know how he found out Mm -hmm. where she is. She's been trying to keep her location a secret, not obviously thinking about her phone location giving her up. Let's talk about this scene with Thomas. I was completely surprised. Mm -hmm, I did not see him coming to this small town I did not see him following her. I thought he was going to be the person who just sends these threatening messages constantly. So when he walked in, I was floored. Mm -hmm. I just did not see that. He's very upset. And it was a very nerve wracking scene because he's trying to drag her out. The fact that Ben was kind of keeping an eye, which he's getting physical with her. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. He bruised her arm. Mm -hmm. I I was thankful that Ben stormed in. I love that scene, especially when the mayor and the sheriff Uh and all the people come around and the first time he punches Thomas in the nose, which I don't condone violence, but. In that moment, I do. Oh, yeah. He deserved it. Yeah, totally did. (laughs) When they all talk about how they didn't see anything, they didn't see anything, so there's nothing to report, and Thomas is getting flustered, and then he smarts off again, and he punches him again, and he said, well, now I saw it. (laughs) Yeah, I know. (laughs) Can't avoid it now. It's like, Ben. It's kind of like one of those things, like, seriously? (laughs) Yeah. That was comical. I love the fact that we discover Ben is an artist, and I knew you would love that, too. Oh, yeah. Because you love love a, a man that is in the art world. Mm -hmm. And his sister Breezy is his art dealer. Yeah. And she starts encouraging him to hire an assistant. He's got kind of a bit of a heavy workload. He's kind of taken some time off. He hasn't had an assistant for a while and he's needed one. And so they have this conversation about her providing someone to work for him as an assistant. He doesn't want this guy. Do not send him. (laughs) Do not send him. He lets her know he's going to find his own. And he makes a post in the wanted area of the small town. And Nora, she stumbles upon it and she does not know that it's been because they've had, you know, this friction all this Mm -hmm. time. So the only instructions that it says is to come out Tuesday at a certain time. And she arrives at this barn. There's nobody around. She walks into the barn and all there is is instructions to paint the wall. What did you think in that moment? I loved it. I knew you would. Tell me more. First of all, I love that there was no name attached to it because that's just so him. Mm -hmm. I I love these characters like this. Although I do love that she kind of is having that uh, self-preservation. Like, uh, maybe I should be a little bit more, you know, like... (laughs) Aware of what Yeah, aware. It, It doesn't really occur to her until she is at this house, at this barn, getting ready and nobody's around. But I love that that was his way to have somebody do an interview because if you're going to be working for an artist, you truly have to know what their life is like and you have to have an understanding of art. So even if you're not the best artist, you have to be able to show that you understand. Mm Mm-hmm. And have some creativity. Right. You understand the life of an artist. The fact that she was as good as she was was a nice surprise because I didn't see that coming. I didn't either and Um, I loved it. Yeah. And she painted from memory a Uh sunset from a few nights back. I know. And I love that he kept that up. Oh, you know, too. it was just so good. But yeah, I love the way he went about it. And I love, well, we can talk about it in a minute, but I love how when he sees it for yes. the first time, that um, moment. Let's shift over to that. He and his daughter, we learn he has a daughter, mm-hmm. Summer. And it's shortly after Nora paints this mural that Ben and his daughter, Summer, go out to check it out. They do mm-hmm. it every week just to see if anybody has stopped by. And this is his time with his daughter. We'll come back to Summer's disease and talk about that. But let's talk about the scene where they discover the 
the paint. I love that he asked her opinion of what she thought, and she loves pink. Mm -hmm. Pink is her favorite. Mine too. And (laughs) it made me think of my little girl because she's six and her favorite color is pink. I love that she just instantly recognizes that it reminded her of the sunset. Me too. And that he sees that just kind of the way it moves him. Mm -hmm. You know, like he's very moved by the painting and he's kind of in awe of the artist that has tried I love that initially when he sees it, he doesn't know it's her. And when he walks over to the note and she signed his name or signed her name, Mm -hmm. he has a little bit of panic on the inside. Yeah. (laughs) Well, I mean, I would too if like the person that you obviously have some major tension with, you know, that you're fighting some Mm -hmm. initial feelings of chemistry there. Yeah. For uh, sure. Yeah. One of the things before we really dig into summer, it you know, they've had Nora and Ben have had these Moments, these interactions, multiple times. It's the scene in the the grocery store where she spills the milk on his feet, which was a funny scene. He points out the fact that she's always apologizing for things. Let's talk a little bit about that and why do you think she feels the need to do that? Are you asking me why I think she feels the need to do that as her character or as somebody who apologizes all the time and I understand that? (laughs) No, that wasn't meant at you at all in a personal uh, way, but you're right. You do apologize a lot. I do. So tell me from your perspective, Sarah, (laughs) why would Nora always apologize? Um, I had not made that connection. I did immediately because I've worked so hard over the last couple of years to stop apologizing for existing and having thoughts and opinions. (laughs) I think... She apologizes for those reasons. I think she has come from a life where she was groomed to be somebody's wife Mm -hmm. and to not be loud and to not take up space and to go along with what you're told. And I think that when you're in that environment and you are a people pleaser, it's very easy to apologize for just having a thought or an opinion or doing something, or if you, you, you make a teeny tiny little, what would be a slight mistake, you know, you feel the need to say you're sorry. And so, yeah, I understood why she did it. I mean, I would have done the same thing. It's something I have to work on all the time and that my daughter doesn't pick up on that. My, I catch my little girl, but she'll say sorry. And I'm like, no, no, don't say sorry. (laughs) So yeah, I just think that she, it's, um, it's some of probably what she's, the life she's from. And I really, I really loved that Ben, first of all, he pointed it out to her, Mm -hmm. but then also encouraged her not to do it anymore. Yeah. I really loved that about him, that he was supportive in that way. I'm sure you did. You are that person for me. You were the person that said, you apologize. You and our other friend uh, told me, stop, why are you apologizing? I'm like, oh, (laughs) sorry. (laughs) (laughs) No, you're not. (laughs) No, I'm not. Let's talk for a little bit about Summer and her brittle bone disease. This is such a tragic part of the story, obviously. Yeah. It's very disheartening. It's very a very hard and emotional journey for Ben to walk. This is his little girl. We don't know at the time what's happened to Summer's mom, and we don't find that out until much later. So let's just focus our conversation specifically on Summer and the struggles that she and Ben face with this disease. I was so heartbroken. I, I did to not Google it. I I have heard of brittle bone disease. Yeah. I did not realize what all it entailed and just how dangerous it is for her to move around at all. I didn't recognize it initially by the medical term, mm-hmm. and then whenever I pulled it up, I knew instantly what it was. But I just did not. I've heard of it. I've heard of cases where people have had this. I didn't think that most of the time they live for very long a lot. So to know that her life expectancy is not long Mm -hmm. was very hard for me to read from the very get-go when I find out that that's what she has. It was already a difficult story to read to know that he has a little girl that has some challenges and has around-the-clock care medically. I didn't understand when he was fastening her to get into the golf cart to go look at the mural. I didn't understand at that point. I thought, oh my goodness, what is this? What's happening? What does this little Mm -hmm. girl have that she, I just, I don't know what I expected. It was not that. No, it wasn't Um, in my mind either. And just so heartbreaking. Yeah. And Finding myself bracing for impact, knowing that it's the beginning of the end. Right. How that's going to affect Ben. One thing that I absolutely love about Summer is her sunshine personality. I know. Just, I'm always fascinated by these medical cases in any person, regardless Mm -hmm. of age, that just has this 
positivity. They just they just pour out and ooze happiness, hope, upbeat, enthusiasm, mm-hmm. encouragement. And it makes you wonder how, you know, someone with the fate that she has can still have that personality. And I love, love, love that about her. I know. I do too. I've known somebody personally that they were very young and they were a uh, they battled cancer for five years during their teen years and ultimately they passed away at the age of 18. And I instantly thought of this person because their entire, the only time that I knew them the whole time, they were constantly, it was a a constant battle and just the most joyful, positive human being I've ever met in my life. You would leave conversations with them and feel incredible and I just that always stood out to me and then when they passed ultimately it was like a testament the place was Mm -hmm. packed and that's what everybody had to say that's all they knew of this person and that to me is so it's inspirational it is inspirational so when you see this sweet little girl that's just so happy it was just really beautiful it's it makes you want to be that type of person for other people regardless of what you're going through in life absolutely I have a nickname alert and not in the romantic sense. <laughs> Sumblebee, his nickname for Summer. I loved it, friend. It's so The sweet. cutest for her. I love that he calls her Sumblebee. And I like having a nickname alert that's not with the um, two MCs. I, I do too. And, you know, I thought that was the cutest nickname for that because I would have never created that nickname. My sister's middle name is Summer. Ah. And so I just thought the whole time, I'm like, we could have been calling her that like <laughs> our whole lives. I thought it was really sweet. I loved it. Cute little nickname. It was. Obviously, we know that Nora ends up getting the job. Yes. And so she, Ben, and Summer kind of work together. So I love that Summer wants to be a part of the time that they're working out in the barn together and just spending time with them, especially knowing that Uh, She doesn't have a long time to live. I love that she's choosing to spend her time with Ben and Nora. One of the things that Ben really feared about Nora coming into their lives is that Summer would really fall in love with her. And he himself would also. But mostly Summer. He worried about Mm -hmm. Summer initially. Let's talk about their dynamic together. I understand his concerns of introducing somebody new into his daughter's life that you just don't know what that relationship is going to look like. Is that person going to be kind? Which we kind of pick up very quickly. Nora, she automatically has this rapport when she shows up to accept the job um, (laughs) or to not even to accept, but to ask if she got the job. Summer is there. She realizes he has a daughter and a daughter with something clearly going on medically, but she's so great with her for immediately. And that's one of the things that Ben notices. So when they finally start working together, I think Ben is in such awe of not only can Nora do the job that he's hired her to do and do it so well, she just anticipates every next step that he needs to make. And she's right there and prepared and ready to go. But at the same time, she engages with his daughter She laughs with her. She plays with her. They have a true friendship and he witnesses this. And I think that it brings him joy to see that she's brought so much happiness into his daughter's life. I just love their dynamic. I love the three of them. I love that they're all in the studio together. I love that he's not some broody artist that, you know, can't focus on his child at the same time as he's creating artwork. I love that he asked their opinion and... I don't know. What did you think? How did you feel? I attribute the fact that they have such instant chemistry amongst the three of them together and just this special connection that Nora has with Summer and vice versa. I really credit that to Ben and Nora's insta-love kind of moments toward the Mm -hmm. end as being believable because it starts with the chemistry that the three of them have together, in Mm -hmm. my opinion. And I feel because of Nora's close acceptance of Summer and vice versa, that Ben really starts to have a greater appreciation for Nora than he already did. It's kind of an all-encompassing feeling of love or of strong like for Nora just because of that the way she treats Summer and kind of takes her under her wing. So for me, that was kind of the groundwork that needed to be there for the insta-love later in the story when they really jump quickly and escalates as they further their relationship towards the end of the story. 
I think when you see somebody that shows kindness to your child, that really truly does not view them as a burden because you can very much pick up on the signs of people that are just not kid people at all. Mm -hmm. And and I think that it just does something different when you realize, oh, my kid is not a burden to somebody. Yeah. I, I think it gives them the warm, fuzzy feels of just, that's... I like that person. <laughs> I know. agree. Let's move over and talk briefly about Nora's mother and their relationship together and just what a spitfire this woman is. Man, some of these authors really write these wicked mothers, don't <laughs> they? They do. And they're birth moms. <laughs> I know. They aren't you supposed to be the stepmom version? <laughs> Jeez Louise. <laughs> well, I don't like her. No. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't like her. <laughs> Again, I'm like, Team Josie all the way. Totally get why you hated your mom and you moved back to the town that you were you know she's a trip huh she's something she's not good (laughs) no she's not and i i know we're just briefly talking about her we'll come back and talk about all her sins and everything exposing with the letter and all that in a little bit i just wanted to briefly mention setting the groundwork for the fact that we don't like dora's mother not that it not that it's a surprise to anyone listening no she's horrible (laughs) she's just not good to nora she she berates her, kind of sends her own threatening text, you know, at mm-hmm. the beginning uh, when she walks away from the wedding, which I just immediately, right then and there, I cannot jump on board with that. I'm like, okay, either your kid is like the spawn of Satan or you're a bad mom because <laughs> there, there is not a single mother, good mother on the planet that when their child needs to walk away, whether it's at the altar or not, that's... Going to take the side of the groom. Uh huh. I mean, come on. I, I would. That was fishy to me. Anyway, anyway. it was. It was so. <laughs> yeah, I kind of secretly wondered: is the mother involved with the groom? You know, I but, also wondered did you, that. Yes. Did you? Okay, it crossed so, my mind for it sure. It crossed my mind. Well, yay. I'm glad that we had that same train of thought. When Nora and Ben and Summer are together, Summer's lungs start to fail. And this is a really hard emotional scene. They Mm -hmm. rush to the hospital. They stay there in Burlington. This is really when it's revealed the severity of her disease and Mm -hmm. just how quickly she's starting to fade. This is really heartbreaking. Let's just talk a little bit about this transitional scene. This scene is very, this was very hard to read. Mm -hmm. I was very emotional reading this, knowing that the doctors are telling him it's time. Yeah. Weeks, days. You know, her body is, not months. Her body's deteriorating at a rapid pace and you need to be prepared. There's nothing else we can do. Cause Ben tries to say, so should we do? And he's like, there's nothing else we can do. Mm -hmm. I love Nora for being there for him. Same. There's a moment where he says, you're not staying. Or Mm -hmm. something to that effect. You could see in that moment how close they truly have become. Even if they're not showing it in all the ways. She brings comfort to him. Yeah. She brings comfort to Summer. And I think, you know, he needed her there. But this scene was just... Yeah, it it was was hard. It was hard. When Nora tells him that she's going to head home, he offers to drive her. Summer's fallen asleep for the night, so he offers to drive her. I love that about him, that mm-hmm. he still cares about her safety. It's in the scene where they're driving home that each of them opens up a little bit about their past. This is where I think we learn about Ben and Summer's mother and how Summer's mother chooses to walk away as mm-hmm. soon as she finds out about Summer's disease and how that affected Ben, and he immediately made plans to raise her on his own. I commend him for that immensely and I love that about him and Nora opens up a little bit about we still don't know what's in the letter but she does open up about you know the leaving her Mm ex-fiance at the altar and all of that I love this opportunity for them to kind of have an open dialogue about their past because up until this point they haven't really dug into that yeah it was very eye-opening to learn what had transpired with Ben and his ex Mm -hmm. And the fact that he didn't even know she was pregnant, yeah, you know, finds out that he has a kid. She doesn't want to care for the kid. He just has, goes steps back, right up, steps yeah. up, and is becomes a father, you know, because how do you walk away from your child the way that she did? And Nora, they're getting to that point where they feel like they can really be vulnerable with each other. They've mm-hmm. already kind of went through some moments where they're witnessing some vulnerable times for, for him, obviously, with his daughter mm-hmm. getting ready to pass soon. So I think it just kind of breaks down that wall. And I do feel like, I know that for you, you felt like a lot of this was insta-love, and I see that aspect. But I do feel like sometimes there's these stories where 
you are just thrust into hard times immediately. And I feel like hard times can make or break relationships. It's like a trauma bond almost. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I kind of feel like that because she is in love with his daughter. She Mm -hmm. has fallen in love with Summer and they have this really strong connection in such a short time. So I just think it's it's one of those things where, to me, this whole conversation, it made the rapid pace at which they seem to be falling for one another more believable, I mm-hmm. guess. Yeah. When Nora gets home, Josie has discovered the letter that Nora received from Alexis, the woman at the, on the wedding day. And this is where the big reveal happens with the letter, with her ex, Thomas, and her mother, and the involvement of that, because Alexis brings to light the fact that she got pregnant with... Thomas's baby they had an affair and it was Nora's mother that tried to pay her off Mm -hmm. to have an abortion Mm -hmm. and she chose not to do that let's talk briefly about the letter and its revelation I was shocked I knew I at this point I was pretty confident that he had had an affair if not multiple affairs Mm -hmm. I wasn't surprised in the least that the mom was involved because of the way she has treated Nora and the close kind of dynamic she's Kind of portrayed with Thomas. Right. So it's obvious that they... But then there was also a part of me that knowing how the mom left their small town after their dad had passed away. And I just kind of thought their mom... She seems like she's one to climb ladders. Mm -hmm. So it seems like she's kind of latched herself on to these people of influence. When we find out that it was hard because she knew... Nora knew Alexis. So that kind of betrayal was difficult. I... I would say I was surprised, but I, I wasn't. Were yeah. you, no, were I, you no. surprised by the nature of the letter? No, I wasn't. I kind of expected something along those lines. I just didn't know the extent of what it was going to entail. Right. I was surprised when they start to speculate, could there be more? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And is this some, this seems like something mom has Which done before. Which is what before. the struggle Nora was facing is, do I try and bring this out into the public? Because they are very well known in their... Right. Uh, realm of people high society people Mm -hmm. and she's got a lot of power in the letter that she received and she's trying to decide what to do with it yeah when summer's in the hospital she has a conversation she asks for nora and she has a conversation with her about heaven and it's in this moment that nora has the realization that summer knows she's dying and this was really heartbreaking to me because summer's putting on a good front for her father she wants to make sure Ben is taken care of and she feels like now that he has Nora in his life that she can you know leave peaceably they decide to start when the doctor tells them that they only have days or weeks left they really start to kind of brainstorm how they can live they can help her live while she's still alive and two of the things that Summer really wanted to do She wanted to see a shooting star, and she wanted to attend a wedding. Let's briefly just chat about these two scenes where they make these a realization for her. I love the shooting star scene. I thought that that was so sweet that they go and wake her up and bring her outside so that she can really watch it. The wedding part, I thought, that's tricky. And the fact that Nora (laughs) orchestrates it all, I really did have in my head, are they going to marry? Oh, same. Same. I was a little bit panicky. I was I too. Thought, Please don't. And we haven't Please talked don't. about Josie and Clay. We, we won't because they're just kind of side characters, but... I need their story. I They're probably going to get it because it sounds like the yeah. way they ended the book is setting it up for them. Right. I need I need it now, though. <laughs> um, Clay and Josie. Josie, Nora's sister, and Clay were married. Josie thought they were divorced. Uh-huh. Shocking, but not so much <laughs> when you kind of get Clay's character That's in the true. story. He didn't sign the papers. They're not divorced. Surprise, surprise. They set it up for them to get married. And Clay is trying to be for real with this wedding and confessing all his feelings. And Josie is having none (laughs) None of it. It It becomes a drama episode. (laughs) And I just thought, oh my goodness. And Summer loved every second. She was so happy (laughs) with all the drama that was unfolding before her little eyes. So Nora made her dreams come true that day, I guess. Yeah, it was just really comical. There was humor in that. I do have to say I should probably bump up my humor for that because that scene was comical to me. I loved it too. It's during these scenes that we're really starting to see Ben and Nora's relationship grow. They're starting to be more intimate with one another. They say, I love you to each other. It's shortly after it's the morning after actually they have been intimate with one another that 
lo and behold, the sheriff shows up on his doorstep and he has to arrest Ben. And Sarah, I was livid in this scene. First of all, I was panicked because Summer's on just, she's at the last. She's at the very end and he even tries to tell the sheriff, I can't. I mean, Summer's literally on the end. I cannot leave. And it made me sick thinking about she's going to pass away while he's not there and I cannot handle that. Yeah, I was crying. Oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> I just, I thought as a parent how that would feel in that moment to not be there for your baby. Mm-hmm. And I can't, I can't go there. Well, we'll go to the the city office where they've arrested him. And we've got Nora's mom there. We have yeah. Thomas there. Mm-hmm. We have a lawyer there. We have Summer's mother there. Yeah, All the people here yeah. with their accusations and and things that they're trying to hold against Ben simply because he came after Thomas at the coffee shop early in the story. Ben really wrestles about what to do and it's in that moment he chooses being a parent over his relationship with Nora and he makes the phone call for her to bring that letter knowing that it would clear up everything. How did you feel in that moment? I would have done the same. I knew you would. Yeah, I would have done the same. And he's hoping she'll understand. And she does, obviously, but yeah. he, it comes with guilt on his side. He's feeling very guilty. Right. I understand for that too, to but that. I, I'm going to tell you if I'm sitting there staring down at a jail cell versus being there for my baby's last breath. Mm hmm. Yeah, there's I'm no I'm going to be question. there for my baby's last breath. Nora does show up with the letter because, of course, why wouldn't she? She's full of support for Ben. They clear everything. Yeah. They get him released, thank goodness. And I was so relieved that Summer had not passed away. But the scenes that follow that, in the scenes where Summer asked to speak with Nora and they have their moment of goodbye, yeah. and then Ben also... I thought for sure they were going to rush through that. And then they gave us a chapter looking back because we know that she passes away. And then it goes to Ben's perspective and his state of mind in the funeral after that. Those were very emotional scenes. I was boohooing like a little baby. When Nora puts on her sunglasses and takes off her jacket Mm -hmm. at the funeral and she has on her pink. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The most... The most emotional scene for me is after Summer passes away and Ben has to be the one to clean her up, But the, which is fine. It's the scene where he actually gets to hug her for the first and the last time. Without having to worry about her. Without having to worry about hurting her. Friend, I just could not stop crying. That was I so... Thought, <laughs> I thought when he tells the nurse that he wants to be the one to take care of her and then when he holds her, because I thought that... So many times throughout that, I just thought, he can't hug his baby Mm -hmm. because he could break a bone. He could fracture something. He can't hug her in her seven years. And the one time he gets to do it, she's, she can't even feel it. She's gone. That was terrible. I can't. (laughs) That was terrible. Yeah. Okay. Moving on. (laughs) In the days to follow, in the weeks to follow, Ben's state of mind, of course, is just devastation. He's pushing Summer away because he's feeling guilty about having to use her for the letter and just trying to process the grief in general. I absolutely love that Charlie, Summer's caretaker, made a promise to Summer to come and check on Ben two weeks after she passes away. I do too. And this is the moment that Charlie gives the letter from Summer to her dad. Let's just briefly mention this before we close out this discussion. Oh, I cried. Yeah. I saw that the fact that a little seven-year-old girl could recognize that her dad was going to need time, mm-hmm. but wanted him to understand that it was okay, that he, he had Nora still, mm-hmm. and that she didn't want him to be alone and just swallowed up within his own grief. And wanting him to live. Yeah. I just, I love when authors write these characters because I do feel like sometimes you think, oh, a seven-year-old wouldn't be that... Intuitive. Intuitive, you know, and and think things through. But I do feel like when you're facing circumstances such as summer, I do think people can be that way. Absolutely. Yeah, it just made me sob. I just sobbed (laughs) for the whole back portion of this story. I did too. Uh, I cried so much in this story and I did not expect that going into it. I didn't either. I didn't know what to expect from this story, honestly. I, like I mentioned in the, the quick review, I, this is my first 
story by Max Monroe, mm-hmm. and I've never read anything else that they've written, so I don't... This was my first introduction, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Although some people have said that their other stories are much different than this, not quite as heavy, so we'll have to... I'm definitely going to... Give it a read and yeah, see if they're lighter. dig into those. All right, close us out with their HEA, the proposal, the pregnancy, all the things. When she goes to him and... He has a a whole thing planned up. He's coming back to life. He has this whole setup. He's going to propose and she tells him she's pregnant and he is excited. Mm -hmm. I did not expect him to be. I mean, I guess, you know, it's wrapping up to the end. So you kind of expect that. But on the hills of losing someone. Yeah, on the hills of losing a child. I just can't even I can't even imagine. So their joy at being able to have a baby to get married and. All the things. And the name. Oh, I love the name and the symbolism of it being autumn and and transitioning from summer to autumn was just perfection. It was so good. It was so good. And I just thought that that was brilliant of the author to write that way. I loved everything about the way that this closed out. What did you? I loved it too. It gave me all the warm feels. I'm glad they got there happily ever after. I love that they got pregnant with a little girl and then got to continue on you know with with autumn in the in the new season of life yeah I agree well that wraps up our discussion of what I should have said thank you for joining us on this emotional but beautiful episode (laughs) we hope you enjoyed it and want to continue the discussion with us we would love to hear from you what were your favorite parts of the story hit us up on instagram at postbook depression podcast or on facebook in our postbook depression discussion group you can also email us at postbook depression podcast at gmail.com until next time keep reading